Welcome to our second video in this unit on differentiation. In this one, what we're going to do is we're going to explore the concept of the derivative, the definition of the derivative, and, if, and the first couple of shortcuts. We'll start getting in with the shortcuts and, uh, and a couple of examples here. Um, starting off, the definition derivative. Okay, the, the derivative of a function is another function. This is written as f prime. I'm sorry, my, my um, equation under notation got kind of messed up here, but oopsie. It should be, it, what, how we read it is f prime. That means derivative. So it's f prime whose value at x is given by f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of this difference quotient. This is what we've been working with now for a while, um, provided that limit does exist. If the limit does not exist and the derivative does not exist, we're going to take a look at differentiability a little bit later on in this video. Um, but again, we're going to be finding limits for these first couple of examples. The limit of this difference quotient, and we'll also get into some derivative notation, sometimes written this way as f prime or red as f prime of x, uh, sometimes written some other ways. And now again, these things mean, as I alluded to in my previous video, the, the concept of the derivative means a couple things. It is the, the, the slope of that tangent line, it's the instantaneous rate of change, and it's also the velocity at any given point also referred to as that instantaneous rate of change. So all of those things um, are related back to the derivatives. So combining that first concept and the second concept, uh, the first video and the second video, is that that derivative is that instantaneous rate of change, is the velocity, is the slope of that tangent line. And for these first couple of examples, I'm going to work out the limits, and then we'll get into some shortcuts. So in my first example here, I have an equation f of x equals 3x squared minus 12x minus 8. And I want to first of all find the derivative, derivative at 4, derivative at negative 2, and then derivative at the a value. These are all f prime, f prime, f prime, f prime. Uh, sorry it doesn't come out very well in this particular video. In the future it does. I just couldn't get it to change correctly. So the derivative f prime of x would be written as the limit as h approaches 0 of that difference quotient. So it's f of x plus h. I'm going to put an x plus h there and there and then minus f of x. So it's going to be kind of long here. It's going to be 3 times x plus h. 3 times x plus h squared uh, minus 12 times x plus h minus 8 and then minus the original equation which is 3x squared minus 12x minus h over h. What I'm going to do is then I'm going to have to simplify it algebraically. When I simplify it algebraically, I need to square this out. I need to distribute um, distribute all that stuff. So I'll start it all over a little bit more. So it's the limit as h approaches 0. When I multiply this out, it's 3 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 12x minus 12h minus 8 minus 3x squared plus 12x plus 8 divided by h. A little rule of thumb for you. I'm going to start canceling some things here in a minute. And when I, when I get to this point, algebraically, that's where pe most people have a trouble uh, squaring it out, combining like terms, all that stuff. Um, when you get to this point right here and you start multiplying things out, this h should be able to divide out because you've got to let h go to 0. So if it doesn't, you have made some kind of mistake algebraically. When I distribute this 3, it's going to be 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared. Now check it out. 12x squared, um, 12x squared, they drop out. 8 minus 8 plus 8, they drop out. 3x squared, 3x squared, it drops out. What am I left with on top? Let me clean it up. Limit as h approaches 0. This is going to be 6xh plus 3h squared minus 12h over h. When I divide out the h, six x plus three h minus twelve. I let h go to zero and I get six x minus twelve. In a few moments I'm going to teach you some rules and it's going to allow you to go right from here to here without having to do all these limits. So just hang in there. We'll get there. Okay. So this is the derivative. This is part A. 6x minus 12. That is the derivative f prime of x. If I wanted to know the derivative at 4, I'd plug in 4. It'd be 24 
minus 12 or 12. If I wanted to know it, if I wanted to note it negative 2, I'd go 6 times negative 2, which is 6 times negative 2 is negative 12, minus 12, which is negative 24. And if I wanted to know it at A, it's 6A minus 12. That's it. That's all it is. Very simple. Okay. These limits in algebraically, this is where people get in trouble. If you're having trouble with this, and I'll do some more examples in class, but if you're having trouble with this, with these limits or algebraically, either ask, make sure you ask in class, stop in and see me, something, because it's the algebra that gets people in trouble. It's not the calculus. Calculus is easy. Um, I'm going to use that. My derivative, uh, remember that my derivative a minute ago, uh, let me, sorry, there, come on. My derivative a minute ago is 6x minus 12. I'm going to use that in the second part, same equation. f prime of x is 6x minus 12. And the first thing I'm going to do is find the slope of the line tangent to the graph um, of this equation at the point 3, negative 1. If I'm going to find the slope of the line tangent to the graph at 3, negative 1, I'm putting 3 right here. So f prime of 3 is the slope of that tangent line, which would be 18 minus 12, or 6. If I wanted the equation of the tangent line, I could write that as y plus 1 equals 6 times x minus 3. This doesn't necessarily ask you for that, but I could ask you both of those questions. The next concept, the, the, the next part of this, um, part B here, the point where the graph where the tangent line is horizontal, this is something we take a look at a lot, especially in our next unit when we start describing, using the deriv derivative to describe the graph. And the reason why is because remember that horizontal lines have a slope of 0. And what ends up happening in these problems, or what ends up happening here, is that those horizontal lines are where that derivative is 0, or a horizontal tangent line. That's a potential turning point on the graph. We spend a lot of time in this first semester describing graphs. Because in the second semester, if you have a, if you have a good picture of the graph, it's a million dollars. And really, remember now, calculus came about long before um, our graphing calculator. We didn't have that to help us sketch graphs, so we're trying to describe the graph so we can get a good sketch of it. So a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So that means the concept, anytime I ask you where the tangent line is horizontal, I want to take that derivative and set it equal to zero. That's going to be a horizontal tangent line. So 6x minus 12 equals zero. Where do I have a horizontal tangent line? At x equals 2. At x equals 2. Again, I'm just kind of pulling this all together with the derivatives and limits and all that stuff. Now, we're going to some basic rules with differentiation. As I told you a few minutes ago, we take that limit of that difference quotient, and with the limit of the difference quotient, what ends up happening is we find the derivative. Some of you are going to struggle with the algebra and the limit. Some of that stuff is going to get really tough with fractions and squaring and cubing things out and whatever. And then we get into all these shortcuts, and you're like, man, why didn't I know these shortcuts? It's so much easier. Well, you know, you got to understand the concept, and then we'll get onto the shortcuts, and they will, I'll show you how they format questions to um, make the derivative so that you have to know the limits on the AP exam as well. Um, the derivative of a linear function, if you have f of x equals mx plus b, remember it's just the slope of the line or the slope of the tangent line. The slope of this line is m, so that derivative is just m. If you have a constant function, remember constant functions are horizontal lines. We just showed a minute ago that the constant function or the horizontal line has a slope of 0. I just, I just showed you that. So if I have f of x equals 2, the derivative is just 0. The derivative of any constant is always going to be 0. And then the one that's probably the million dollar rule that we use over and over again is the power rule. If you have some constant c times x to the nth power, the derivative, you bring down the n, multiply c times n, and reduce the power by 1. So just real quickly, if I had something like f of x, let's say 3x squared, uh, minus 12x, I think it was minus 8. I think that was the equation I had just a minute ago. Check it out, derivative, without doing any limits. I bring the 2 down, multiply it by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Reduce the power by 1. Minus, this is to the first power. 1 times 12 is minus 12. I reduce that x to the 0 power. Is, is x to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. And then the derivative of minus 8 is 0. So 6x minus 12 without doing any, without doing any limits at all. Let me show you an example of that. Let's say we have a spherical he helium balloon, and, and you want to find the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area um, of the balloon with respect to the with respect to the radius r. Should be a comma between that r. 
uh, the surface area of the balloon is given by 4 pi r squared. You do not have to memorize these formulas from geometry. I will give you any of them that you need to. I will let you refer to a formula sheet from geometry on your test and quiz that require any kind of stuff like that. So S equals this. So S prime is the instantaneous rate of change is, I bring the 2 down, the pi is a constant, the 4 pi is a constant. If I bring the 2 down, 2 times 4 pi is 8 pi. R is your variable. I reduce the power by 1, so it's R to the first power. We don't usually write it. So the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area of that balloon at any given radius R is given by 8 pi R. Yeah, that's it. Simple. Um, a couple of other things that you have to understand. Uh, one is differentiability. Um, with differentiability, what ends up happening is that a function is, is differentiable if it's continuous. First of all, it has to be continuous. If, it, if it's not continuous at a point, um, then it's not differentiable at that point ever, 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 ever. And then the second part is says that the limit as x approaches the critical number a from the left-hand side of the derivative has to be equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right-hand side of the derivative. And what I mean by that is you can't have any sharp turning points. So w w if, I, if I were to give you a graph, and a lot of times on the exam they will give you graphs like this, and they'll say, okay, well, we have this nice smooth curve, and then we come down to a point, and then we maybe look like a little seagull, and then let's jump down here and make it a straight line. So this is my point A. That derivative right there does not exist because of that sharp turning point because the derivative over here is going to be negative and then all of a sudden the derivative is going to jump to being positive. And then right here, it's not going to call that point B. It's not differentiable at point B either because you have this discontinuity, this jump discontinuity. So the second part, the limit as x approaches a, a critical number from the left and from the right, they just, those, those, the derivatives have to be the same and, and it, it's not. This one's negative and this one's positive, obviously, because the slope of this graph is negative or falling down. If I drew tangent lines, I'd have a, a slope falling down or being negative. If I drew tangent lines, I'd have a slope being positive or, or going up. Um, vertical tangent lines. Vertical tangent lines um, do exist. Um, if you have the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x, it goes to infinity. Uh, that's a little bit confusing to understand. Um, what, what's easier to understand is if you remember back to, uh, let's, let's, let's take one like this. Let's, let's say we have, um, it has to be continuous at the point. So let's say we have something like um, y equals x to the two-thirds. x to the two-thirds looks like a seagull. By using our power rule. Um, Another thing about vertical tangent lines, let me just go back for a second. A few minutes ago, I said horizontal tangent lines have a slope of zero. Vertical tangent lines, or vertical lines like this, have what we say no slope or undefined slope. These are going to occur where the derivative um, is not defined, but the function is continuous. So this is... Um, um, you know, the, the, the function has to be continuous, but the derivative is not defined at that particular point. If I apply... If I apply my power rule here, y prime equals two-thirds x to the negative one-third or two over three x to the one-third. Here's a very simple way to determine where you have a vertical tangent line. Where is that derivative not defined? That derivative is not defined at zero because I can never divide by zero. So I have the derivative in the denominator. This is continuous at zero but the derivative is not defined at zero. So therefore, there's a vertical tangent line at zero. This is sometimes, uh, this is what we call a cusp. We don't, we're not responsible for that in AB a calculus. But there's a vertical tangent line right here. We have this sharp turning point. That sharp turning point, oftentimes, if it's continuous there, um, we'll find that there's a vertical tangent line there. More on this later. We're going to do more on this when we get into some implicit differentiation as well. Finally, in this unit or this section, um, what we're going to take a look at are some derivative notations. And with the derivative notation, what ends up happening is we just represent the derivative a lot of different ways. So you've seen me write it as like f prime of x, f y prime, uh, dy dx. dy dx means the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. The d stands for delta um, or approximate change. Um, that's with this x values being very very small. This means d dx means find the derivative of f of x. 
D, capital D, lowercase f, x of f of x, that means find the derivative. And then this one also means find the derivative. Um, technically, I mean, honestly, you're, you, you really, these first four, you're going to see these a lot. These two, not so much. But you should know that going on. But these first four are really responsible for. And then what I did down here is I can find a first derivative or I could do second derivative, or third derivative, or fourth derivative, or so on, and so, or nth derivative. And if I'm finding like a first derivative, a second derivative, I just keep on taking the derivative. Let me just demonstrate that to you in a second. Let's say I had y equals x cubed. First derivative, y prime, is 3x squared. Second derivative, I take the derivative of this, 6x. Third derivative, 6. Fourth derivative, 0. Once it zeroes out, it's zeroed out. Not all derivatives do zero out. If you have fractional exponents, they won't. If you have sine and cosine curves, they won't. Um, but, but, but polynomial functions will. So anyway, you should be familiar with these different types of derivative notation. Um, again, the ones I will use most often will be these three in this unit. Or you know, we might see this one a little bit. Um, and the same thing with the second derivative, third derivative, and so on and so forth. All right, so you're ready for the next uh, assignment? Good luck with that. I'll clarify in class anything that you, any concepts you don't understand. Um, you do still have to work with some limits. I'll show you how I'll word some questions in class to, uh, or word some questions on test and quiz uh, to kind of confuse you a little bit or to make sure you understand that, that uh, make sure you understand that definition, that the limit of, of the difference quotient as it goes to, as h goes to zero, um, and uh, make sure you have a clear concept on that. Best of luck.